Ladies and gentlemen, oh, let's go. Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? Well, actually, I live in Delaware now, so does that make me a Delawarean? Keep singing, girl. You know, Beyonce is my friend in my head. They gave my people sometimes, too. You know, when I was a kid, I had an imaginary enemy. Like, does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Life as P presented by Say What Radio. Hello, hello, hello. This is your girl, Phoenix Ash, and this is Life as P. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is your first time, I appreciate you giving us a shot, giving us your ear, listening in for a second. I appreciate whoever recommended us or however you found us. If you were scrolling through your different streaming devices or streaming platforms, I guess, (laughs) I would like to say thank you for thinking we look interesting enough to check us in. And I say we because this is a group effort here. I could not exist without people who listen consistently. Thank you so much to everyone who listens all the time. I appreciate you. Let's get into it. So I actually had a pre-recorded podcast that I did last night and I was going to load it and everything because I was like, this is life is P. You're going to have to know how it is. But guys, I was so tired and so delirious. As I was talking, I could feel myself like blacking out a little bit and then coming back to it. I was like, not sure if I spiraled into a different point <laughs> to the same point. <laughs> it was a whole mess. And I was like, mm, I'm going to have to get up tomorrow. And I'm going to have to do that different. <laughs> Because I know it's life is P. I can just tell y'all about it. Y'all don't have to hear my mess. You ever like be so tired, you talking or you talking to someone and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> What'd you say? You mumbled something that came from left field, or different topic or whatever. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. But for me, that means, okay, I can't do this no more. Let me just close my eyes and go to sleep and stop. Let's just stop fronting. And the whole thought about it is... I was thinking about doing too much versus doing too little. Often I beat myself up and I'm working on it. You know, a lot of people tell me, you know, you're really hard on yourself. You have really high standards for yourself. And I don't think that's necessarily a horrible thing, but I could probably go a little easier on myself and not rip myself to shreds over things that I feel like I should be doing that I'm not doing or I'm not doing enough of. I am constantly feeling like, okay, I haven't written today. I haven't done what I was supposed to do. Or when I'm at my daytime job, I'm like, okay, I didn't get these reports right. I got to get them right. So I will spend hours on something doing it over and over and over and over again. Like I got to get it right. Now, part of that is good because I'm partially like that because I feel like if I get it right right now, that I save myself dozens of times in the future of fiddling with it. So that part I think is good. Practice is making it perfect. Like I'm learning how to do a particular process and I'm doing it over and over again. But at the same time, like I don't give myself a break, not as much as I should. And as tired as I was last night, I was thinking, you know, I haven't really written this week. I probably wrote all of like 500 words this week, to be honest with you, which is not a lot for someone who has a manuscript that's due. <laughs> it's, it's not a lot. When you have to write, you know, a 50,000 word book and you're stuck at 15,000 and you've written 500 words and it's taking you a whole week to do 500 words, it's not a lot. So I've been like beating myself up saying, you know, you haven't written, you haven't done your daily goals, you haven't done your weekly goals. What are you doing? Are you not getting it together? Are you slipping? Are you giving up? Are you going to now take a whole year to write this book? And not that it's bad that some people take a whole year, but my contract and my due date for this manuscript is not a year away. (laughs) (laughs) And I've been working on it for a couple months. I got to get it together for real, for real. I constantly feel like I'm doing too little and I was just really evaluating it this morning. And I'm like, no, I'm doing too much. I have a number of things that are going on. I'm trying to organize my daughter's birthday party. I feel so guilty because her birthday is coming up very quickly and I have not planned a birthday party. So much so that like the places that I've reached out to are full 
They're jam packed. There's one place that has like a Saturday night open, but it's at eight o'clock. My daughter's gonna turn four. I'm not giving her no party at no eight o'clock at night. Like it's not happening. If she has a party at eight o'clock at night, you might as well be at home so she can go to sleep afterwards. So I mean, I have options, and that's the thing. Like I was literally about to cry over the fact that there was no place that could host this party. I mean, granted, I could host it at my house. I don't want to <laughs> because it means I have to have my house cleaned up like professionally, not by me. I'm not professional at cleaning up at all. Like that is not a strength of mine. I will tell you quickly. So for all you people out there who like to go to other people's house and be like, oh my God, she only got one kid. Why is her house like incredibly junky or whatever? Yo, this is just not my strong suit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I am blessed enough to have some resources where I can pay somebody to come and clean my house. But that's what would have to happen. I'm not blessed enough to have it done on a regular basis. Well, let me not say I'm not blessed enough. I'm not at a place where I can have it done on a regular basis or that I'm willing to afford it on a regular basis, but I would do it for a party. I'm not going to do it though. I would rather have her party somewhere else. She's been watching these things on YouTube with like obstacle courses and games and stuff. And she's like, mom, I wish I could go there. <laughs> I was like, poor child, we don't take her nowhere. So I'm trying to arrange for her to go to one of these kinds of places in our area for her party. I think that she would definitely enjoy it. At the very least, what I'll end up doing is if I can't book a party anywhere, I'll just tell everyone where we're going to be. We're going to go to one of these places and we'll just participate and play and whatever. And then like treat everyone to pizza afterwards. So there's a backup plan. And that's what I need to be okay with, that I have a plan, some kind of plan. There's another plan, a plan where she's going to enjoy herself and she's going to execute or I'm going to execute. And I need to be okay with that, that it's not going to be catastrophic. My daughter so doesn't care. Like she doesn't know, like my birthday is on this day of the calendar is going to be on Saturday or whatever. And she doesn't expect that we're going to have this whole celebration on that particular day. Her birthday falls on a Friday. So I'm probably going to send cupcakes to her school anyway. But she's really chill when it comes to stuff like that. So me beating myself up is strictly about my expectations and what I want. And I'm starting to like learn to tune in to what it is that she would really enjoy and provide that. And that I can provide. So I'm trying to ease up on myself for that. But also with the writing, I have some time today. I'm going to dedicate some hours and I'm going to knock out a few thousand words. But my excuse all week was, yo, sleep has been feeling too good. Like it's when I tell you sleep has been feeling amazing this week. It felt amazing when I was in Memphis, but it was like amazing this week. And I was just like, probably because I need it. I've been putting in a lot of hours at the day job and I hate that because it means it's taking my focus and concentration off the thing that truly matters to me. However, I do understand that the day job is my investor and so I need to please my investor to some degree so that I can continue to invest in these things that I love and the lifestyle that I love so that I can be able to do more of things I love. I know it sounds like I'm probably still tired and spiraling in my point. But honestly, I hate that. And it's temporary, right? I'm in a peak season. I'm in a season where there's a lot of work. It's picking up. It's going to slow down after about another three or four weeks. It's going to slow down. So I just have to maintain. As I'm talking, I'm probably like, it's probably a good idea to just like reach out to my publisher and let her know what season I'm in and when I expect everything to slow down and everything to give me the opportunity to really dive headfirst into some of these projects that I have pending. Yeah, communication's key. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that on my agenda for today. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So you talking it out really helps. Make sure you have somebody to talk it out with, or even if it's just to yourself, but like talk it out because if you get stuck, you can start to work some stuff out. But I really need to think about the fact that I am doing too much. I have this long list and part of me doing too much. When I say I'm doing too much, it's not like I can cut something off the list. These are things that I feel need to be done, but I'm doing too much by beating myself up over not getting them executed in the time frame that I fantastically thought was possible. Because if I took myself into consideration and I took my schedule into consideration and my habits and patterns and so forth, 
I probably would not expect to get all of this done in the short amount of time. If I looked at who I was realistically, what I had to do realistically, and how much time each thing truly takes, and how much effort and brain power and all of that that it truly takes, I could have set some realistic goals for myself and not been in a position where I feel like I'm failing at everything. And that's honest. I need to go back to the drawing board. I need to do the math on it. It's not as simple as this needs to be done and this needs to be done by then. I need to do the math on it and figure out what makes sense and what is a realistic goal. How can I truly attain this and be happy in my life? There are some pressures that are necessary. And I totally agree with some pressures being present because sometimes it just sends you into full swing, at least for me. There are some pressures that are necessary. So I definitely am not looking for somebody to take away deadlines from me. I need a deadline. You cannot have things open-ended for me because it will not happen. Deadlines make me say, okay, I got to buckle up, particularly the closer I get to them. But I need a deadline. However, I need pushback when it's necessary. I need to not be at my day job doing 13-hour days. I know I got to get things right and things got to be finalized and stuff got to be sent, but I have room to communicate with the people that I answer to, to say, okay, this is my cutoff. There's actually a cutoff that's expected of me. Like They're like, I don't want you to work 12-hour days. So when it's getting to 12 hours, like stop, stop finish up your next working day, not even tomorrow, your next working day, or whoever's working tomorrow, let's send the information over them tomorrow. Everything you've completed, let's send it over to them and see if they can complete it for you and send it out on your behalf. And I've done that for other people as well. So it's not like if you send it to someone, they get the credit and now somebody thinks they did it. It's totally not that environment. So I need to be able to utilize those tools and stop being so prideful and feeling like, no, I messed this up. I got to finish. I mean, yeah, when I mess up, I want to fix it. However, there are resources and people who are willing to help fix it. And I need to take advantage of that. I had a situation where I was staying late to help someone else complete their reports. And they were struggling with the reports. And every time they would struggle, I would step in, I would help, and I would run some reports for them. And I would send it to them and be like, okay, good. You should be good to go. You can send this out. And I was really just trying to make sure they were okay. We were at the site late some nights, and I just wanted to make sure they weren't by themselves, and I would walk them out or whatever. Well, the other day, I was at the site late trying to figure out some of my reports and this person had their coat on, backpack, <laughs> stuff in hand, coffee cup, whatever, was walking out halfway out the door. They tossed over their shoulder, you good? And I kind of was like, I felt obligated to say, yeah, because they were halfway out the door. You know, she's been sick. She's been coughing and everything. So I'm like, just trying to be all right. Forgetting the fact that We're not supposed to be on site. So I work at a place that's not at a particular facility. It's off site. And we're not supposed to be there by ourselves. Apparently she forgot too. So because she was leaving me by myself. And I was there very late at night. I didn't leave till after 10 o'clock. When she left, it was about 630. And when she left, I was struggling with reports. And when she said, am I good? She didn't ask, you know, you've been here a while. Do you think you'll leave soon? What's happening? I did this last week, so is there something that I can, let me take a look at what I have and maybe I could share with you. But I let it be and just was like, you know, she just don't think like me. That's okay. What upset me was the next day I reached out to another coworker who had more experience in doing the things that I was doing. And I was saying, you know, gosh, I'm stumped. I don't know where to find particular information. It doesn't seem to be pulling properly. You know, can you help me? And this girl, she's so wonderful. Her name's Melissa. She was all ready to help me and was pouring into me and sending me all these tools and telling me where to go and how to get here and how to get there or whatever. But what struck me is that she said, hey, I told this girl this yesterday. The girl who left me by myself to do it, she had told her yesterday all the information that she had given to me and all the reports she had given to me. But the person who left me never, one, said that they reached out to her to gain this information. 
Two, never said, hey, this person gave me additional tools that I noticed you didn't give me before or wasn't available before. Do you have these tools? These tools look like it would make things so much easier. Do you have them? Hey, I'm leaving, but it seems that like you're still here. And I think if you had these tools, you would do this quicker. So may- do you have this tool? Because this is what this person told me. No mention of it. Then Melissa was saying to me that the way that the girl was asking her questions and interrupting what she was doing, she was thinking that she was hosting the event that I was hosting. She was thinking that she was doing it right then and there and that she was running these reports. And then apparently she was also asking my supervisor a whole bunch of questions. And my supervisor was thinking that this information was being funneled to me, that she was on my behalf asking these questions so that I could be able to handle what it was that I needed to handle. So they both were also surprised to find out that not only did this person not communicate any of this information to me, I had no idea that she was in communication with them. I had no idea that she had the tools to do what I was doing and do it more efficiently and decided not to share these tools. And so I was angry. I was really pissed off because I felt like it was petty. It was catty. It was selfish. Not to mention, she was upset with me earlier because I was showing someone how to do a presentation. And I was trying to make her understand that I'm showing this person how to do a presentation. So in the future, when we're stuck doing reports, this person can step in and do the presentation so we don't have to pause. And we can, you know, figure out our reports and give more time to the things that we're held accountable for. And so I kind of feel like she did that in retaliation of how upset she was because I was showing someone else how to do a presentation, a presentation that this person already knows how to do. (laughs) So it's not like I slighted her and was like, before I teach you, I'm going to teach her. So it's just really selfish, really catty, really petty. However, I calmed myself down by saying, you know, she wasn't obligated. She asked if you were good and you didn't reply and say, no, I'm stumped. Because you assumed, because she only had the position for a short while, that she didn't have the tools to help you. And so it was a wrong assumption because I'm a firm believer in go get what you need. So ask the question, tell people what you're stuck at so that if somebody does have a tool, they could jump in and help. However, I do know this person pretty well and that they were being selfish and catty and petty and they want to be seen as needed. So they withhold information on a regular basis so that people can turn around and feel as though they need something they have. So I was very angry. However, like I said, I realized not only was it the wrong assumption, but I was doing too much. I was putting my family aside. I was putting my writing aside. I was putting the things that mean the most to me aside in order to give more time to this person and be available to help them do the things that they struggled with. I inquired about what it was that they were struggling with. I searched for the tools that would be able to help them. I did things on their behalf. I did things in place. When I knew I was going to be out of the office, I made arrangements so that this person would have backup when I wasn't there. Not the regular arrangements that you're supposed to do when you are out of the office, like, hey, I'm out of the office, you take my place. But like really reaching out to people to say, and listen, this is the first time she's doing X, Y, and Z. She has the reports and everything, but please, can you be on site if possible to help her? Can you assist her? Can you be on the lookout, be alert, be available for her to reach out to you and gain your assistance so that she is okay? This is what I was doing for this person who gave two shits, excuse my language, because you know I don't curse a lot, but (laughs) she really did not care about what my plight, my struggle, my time, my family. She don't care about anything personal regarding to me. And honestly, she don't have to. It's not her obligation. It's mine. It's my obligation. So although I was angry, I was only angry for a short period of time because when I came to the realization that I was doing too much, I was doing too much and I was expecting to be rewarded with someone caring about my plight as I cared about theirs. And it's not to say that I'm supposed to make myself in a position where I no longer care about theirs, but I have to remind myself of my personal obligations that mean more to me. And I can't continue to put those things on the side for somebody who does not care about them as well. 
So I was doing too much. Those were hours that I could have poured into my writing. Those were hours that I could have spent time with my daughter, that I could have been home before she went to bed. Those were hours that I didn't have to eat fast food for dinner. I could have made a meal because I would have had the energy to cook. or I would have been home early enough to cook and it makes sense. Those were hours that I wouldn't have to be so exhausted, that I wouldn't have to beat myself up. Those are hours I could have been calling around places for my daughter's birthday party. Amen. So it's not, she don't owe me hours. She don't owe me information. One, I need to go search the information I need and recognize when I've been spending too long trying to figure something out on my own and know that I have to turn around and ask a question. But two, I need to have my own cutoffs. I need to set my boundaries and to be clear. And I need to give the extra to those that really appreciate the extra or that need the extra for me and not just offer it up to everybody. And that's for me to know because I do sometimes offer up my extra to just everybody. Like, oh, I got extra and just offer it up because I'm so willing to help. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you shine. Despite the fact that I know you've been talking about me behind my back, but you know, I just want to see you shine. I want to see you succeed. I don't want you to look stupid. If you're supposed to be assigned as my partner, then I look at your failure as my failure. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm on my P's and Q's trying to help you, but never realizing that you have tools that can help me. And I'm one of those people who like, you know, there's people who work, seasonal employees who work with us that like, I constantly, if you figure something out, I'm like, yes, share that knowledge. Thank you for sharing it with me because I still don't know everything about what I'm doing. And if you figured out something, if you were playing in something and figured out something, please share it with me. But not just share it with me. I tell you, share it with the group. Don't give it to me to share with the group. You share it with the group. Let people know that you are equipped to figure some stuff out. Because when a position opens up and you want to apply for a new position, I want you to have a reputation of knowing what you're doing and knowing how to figure things out. So if you don't have the information, know this person's good enough where they can figure things out. So share with the group. I want you to have that reputation. But at the same time, I need to reel myself in. Those instances will never change. If you knowledge share with me and figure stuff out, I'm going to encourage you to knowledge share with the group so that people know it was you. However, if you are someone who is manipulating information or hoarding it in order to make me look a certain way or make someone else in the group look a certain way or to make yourself seem more valuable than you truly are, then I need to set my boundaries because I can see it. My eyes are not closed. I can see it. Sometimes I get so one-sided that I'm just like, no, it's about what I want to do and how I want everybody to shine. But if you got your own way of shining, I need to go ahead and let you do that because my way works for me. It works for my reputation. It works for my camaraderie with my coworkers for the most part. People who work with me love for the most part to work with me. They love the fact that they get recognition that it's an open atmosphere and they're willing to help me in ways that I cannot even begin to say because like I said, I don't know everything and I'm still trying to figure stuff out. And I love the fact that I have a lot of people who work with me who are in positions where the expectation is that they know less, but they've been able to figure some stuff out and they freely come and share these things with me because they want me to have these tools. Just like I want them to have tools, they want me to have those tools. And sometimes that breeds jealousy. You know, there's been people who've talked about me, not a lot, but there's been a couple and this person who's hoarding information is one of them and talk about me and so forth. But I just need to realign and reset and just be like, I'm exhausted, but I'm exhausted for my own reasons. I gave you too much and I know that you are not the person I need to give all of this to. I know that. So it's on me to create that boundary and to realign myself and say, I have this extra chunk of hours. You know, when I go through and do the math and say, where's the extra time? Where can I put in more time? Because I'm going crazy, not executing my goals. And I don't know why. Where is the extra time? I just don't have it. But when I start doing the math and start breaking stuff down, I'm like, oh, I have it. I gave it to someone else. Okay, let me not do that. Because that person, like I said, could give two craps about what it is I got going on. They just take, 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 take. They don't want to give. So I need to realign and I need to say, okay, 
these are my boundaries. This is what I'm willing to give. And this is where I stop because I need to give it somewhere else. I just need to reallocate my time. That's all. It's not that I don't have it. I need to reallocate it. And I wonder how many of us are doing too much in certain areas and not doing enough in other areas. So the things that we care about, we're telling ourselves we're failing, but we're overdoing it in another area where we can create a boundary and reallocate that time, reallocate that effort, reallocate that energy in order to get accomplished what we want to get accomplished so that we can see more of balance. I feel like balance is a never ending chase. We're constantly trying to figure out how to tip the scales in our favor. It's a never ending chase, but I feel like you can win more. You can win more by reallocating. Just think about where you're doing too much and reallocate that time, energy, and effort. And sometimes it's in our relationships. Sometimes it's in our marriages or in who we're dating, or sometimes it's for our kids. I got a lot of people who got grown kids who take a lot of energy and are unthankful, ungrateful, whatever. And that's your kid, but they're also an adult now. So you have to figure out where the boundary is where you can reallocate that energy and effort into something else that fulfills you. Not to say you're supposed to ignore your kid or abandon them or anything like that. So don't advocate that. However, in order to preserve you, you can only give what you have. And if you're dwindling away, you will constantly feel like you're failing because everything that you have to give to everything in your life will continue to shrink. So you have to figure out how to reallocate your time, your energy, your effort into the things that matter to you so that you can fill your cup and re-energize yourself to be the person you want to be in the different aspects of your life. So that's my soapbox. <laughs> it took me a while to get there, but that's my soapbox. That's my issue. That's what I'm telling you, whereas doing too much versus doing too little. You're not doing too little. You're trying to beat yourself up because you don't have enough time. You're not putting in the proper energy or effort. It's just because you've allocated it somewhere else. So go find where you've allocated it, where you're doing too much. Scale that back and realign. Do that. I'm going to do that. That's my plan. So let's do this together. Okay. We'll check back in next week. We'll figure out if that's where we're at or I'll figure out. Slot up in my DMs. Let me know. I'm at P Rights on Instagram, at P Rights on Twitter. I'm Phoenix Ash on Facebook. Get up in my messenger. Let me know if this is what's working for you. If you have tools that can work for me, please let me know. <laughs> let me take advantage of that. I appreciate everything that you guys pour into me. I love the messages. I love when people tell me that I'm impacting their lives. I love when they have things that will impact mine. I love it. I totally love it. If you want to check out any of my work, any of my completed work, my book, Cookies and Crumbles, is available on Amazon as well as Kindle. My book, Soil Sheets, is also available on Amazon as well as Kindle. These are related novels. So why don't you just pick both of them up? Enjoy the full story. I've gotten a lot of great reviews. I'm really happy about the feedback that's been popping up on Amazon as well as Goodreads. Thank you, guys. I love the fact that you're rating it. If you are an Audible listener, I have a book on Audible. It's called In Her Makeup. It's also on Kindle as well as Amazon. It's also on Apple Books. So check that out. Let me know what you think. Leave a review for that. Let me know what you think of my narrator, the story. The story is quite emotional, I believe, but I think it's a great book. It's a standalone novel. It's my first novel, so I'm very proud of it. You know, a lot of times we do work. We're not proud of it like a year or two later, but I'm still proud of it. So <laughs> check that out. Do me that solid. If you don't have Audible, but you've been interested in trying, I believe they have a free trial. And the first book you download is free. So if you make In Her Makeup, the first book you download will be free. That's what's up, y'all. Anyway, that's my spiel for today. I thank you so much for...